Since Feeling is First by E. E. Cummings Since feeling is first, who pays any attention to the syntax of things will never wholly kiss you. Holy to be a fool while spring is in the world, my blood approves. And kisses are a better fate than wisdom, lady, I swear by all flowers. Don't cry. The best gesture of my brain is less than your eyelids flutter, which says, we are for each other. Then laugh, leaning back in my arms, for life's not a paragraph, and death, I think, is no parentheses. That's a difficult question to answer. All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a, another edition of Dylan Box. Um, I'm your host, Ryan Harsh. And I'm Chris Leroy. And it's been a while, so uh, we've come up with a new concept. And we're, we're going to uh, try to make things a little more fresh and interesting. Yeah. So um, what we're going to be doing with this uh, episode is we're going to do uh, gr- what we think are Dylan's great one-two punches. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So like, you know, basically puts out something extraordinary and then follows that up with something that's either a companion or even more extraordinary or, or just as good. So um, I pick two and then you pick two. Okay. So we're going to start with mine. Okay. So and then we'll see what we got here. So we got... We got a hard reaction pulling up backwards, I think, right? Okay. So this one came first. So we have we have uh, Desire followed up by Hard Rain. Okay. So both came out in 76. This one came out in January, I believe. And this was a live document of the tour um, that, that Dylan was doing for Desire. Okay. So pretty cool. So um, I, I picked these because... Um, well, still fresh in my mind was the Rolling Thunder doc, um, which we'll probably talk about some other time at yeah. greater length. But it was a, a tour that Bob did with this band that he had on Desire, um, and it, it's just to me, it's just it's just kind of like probably his greatest live band that we'll ever see. Is right? it, yeah, and he's got this uh, this whole notion of the, this kind of rambling role uh, of wide range of musicians mm-hmm. that. We're gonna almost like a carnival come right. into town, and and there would be the variety. Of this it's like a Pandora's box mm-hmm. of different musics that could happen from any of these events. Absolutely. With with Desire, it had this new sound where he had like uh, you know like a violin on there. Um, he had some kind of epic songs that harken back to stuff he was doing in the '60s. Um, but the live album was pre- pretty much the same band, but it was some more like familiar songs that you know, we we'd already known by the time. So. He was playing stuff like uh, uh, "You're a Big Girl Now," "Shelter from the Storm," which were pretty fairly new, uh, but but then things like uh, "Stuck Inside a Mobile" with Memphis Blues again, um, "Idiot Wind," which is brand new, but in this case, some of these songs took on like a whole new life, right? Yeah, with his band. Is it wasn't it from that tour that he had the the television show that there was the live tv right event. so like it was a two-phase rolling thunder thing so i think this was like the second phase was was where this came from okay um yeah but he had like a television show um i think by this point he wasn't always in, in the white face but sometimes he was uh just depending on you know when you see him and what it was looking like but yeah what he yeah. felt like that that day exactly that day. exactly but but um this show i think like literally it was like raining out when he was doing the show I believe if I'm if I'm wrong, I'm sure someone that's picking this apart will say something. But I think <laughs> this was in Colorado or something. So okay. is, it, is it as as far as uh, Dylan live albums go? Mm-hmm. Uh, how does that fit in that canon? Is it one of the stronger uh, mm-hmm. live performances? Or it's hard it's hard to capture things live. Absolutely, I, I think it is because first you hear the, the studio. And then even though there's not like, you know, any of those songs on here, it's like you're hearing the same incarnation. So I think you're catching like the fire of the band. Um, and so, I, you know, he has like different live albums, a lot of which, you know, weren't released in the moment. Mm-hmm. Like, for example, you know, we didn't hear all of the 66 tour stuff until much later on. 
Um, this being released the same year kind of gave the fans, uh, like, you know, if they were lucky to see the shows or if not, it gave them a taste of what he sounded like in that moment. Um, but then again, like a year or two later, they would sound completely different because the next live album was Budokan, where, oh. where that sounded like that. And those songs, um, some people say they sounded like Vegas Dylan or, you know, they're like jazzed up a little bit. Yeah, or, he didn't have the, right. is he wearing that uh, Elvis cape uh, yeah, thing? Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. So, you know, but but com sounded completely different from this. Yeah. So, you know, like I I like live albums um, when they're not like heavily edited, you know, because sometimes they are. I think like most of Dylan's live albums are pretty great. Um, you know, they're, you could say that the box set, the Rolling Thunder box set might be a little better than this. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think it kind of is because this is I mean, the songs are OK on here, but it's kind of like a hodgepodge of, you know, it's just, hey, let's just all these songs on right here. and i think just yeah. the, the limitation of vinyl right uh that you can only put in so many songs and things couldn't really stretch out right uh and then it would come to song selection you mm -hmm. go and see a live show and a band's playing you know 20 25 songs sure uh how does that get boiled down to one mm -hmm. one feel and uh you know um down to the Flood, that's a double album. Yes. So you do get this kind of more sprawling and, and then mm -hmm. it's time. That was that seemed like a very extravagant uh yeah. live uh album. But uh it, it, yeah, this is certainly a good companion piece for mm -hmm. the uh, for the Rolling Thunder box set because that that's a really um it's it's cool to hear how the songs are different disc to disc, yes. you know, some of the same sets and say how they approach it because he if there's any strength of Dylan as a live performer, it's his insistence. Yeah. He just absolutely insists that um, that they do something new with the song. Sure. He didn't ever feel like that the recorded version of the song was some sort of holy yeah. piece uh, that could that could never be recast. Right. right. And, and right. So every live performance is a, it's a little it's different. Thing, yeah. yeah and, and on here and on the box set too, you know, you hear this like enthusiasm for the older songs and, and there's a lot of like passion and fire mm -hmm. in that because he's playing with totally new people. So, you know, they did rehearse a little bit before the tour, but like a lot of it was, you know, he, he had some interesting people on board and, and they just created this thing that, you know, after the tour was over, they, they wouldn't do ever again. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why I, I kind of like, this is my one, two punch. Okay. Um, you know, we had we had Desire, and then you know, followed up by this, all in the centennial year of our country, right? So oh, this is good, you know, kind of good stuff to listen to. Um, Nine dollars and ninety nine cents will get you a copy of Desire. Yeah, and uh, not anymore, but then Hard, hard Rain get it at six ninety nine. Now that's the spirit. A, a little bit, a little bit less, but you know, they're both great albums. I really like. Um, my my favorite tracks from Desire, just really quick. I I love Isis. That's like yeah, it's a great song. Yes, it, it's it's amazing. And, and um, one more cup of coffee is great too. And um, of course, Hurricane. Yeah. Um, but I mean, a lot of people looked at this album as a little more like sprawling with the song lengths, and he was telling more like stories. Story songs, yeah. Right. So, good stuff. Good stuff. Not like his best, but then who's to say what's his best? Exactly. And I always, I always just love the cover. Yeah. Of Desire. Sure. I just, just like the coolest. I mean, Look now, that coat. now there's a whole line of clothing. Now, yes. Uh, where you can, you know, buy this Dylan. You can buy this look. Mm, okay. I don't know if you'll look as cool as Dylan does in this you picture. Won't. I don't think anyone. I don't think could. it's cool to wear fur anymore either, like that. <laughs> you know, it's really like it's a one-two punch because it's really a before and after kind of thing. So, yeah. Okay. You know, you have, oh, that's really right? true. There you go. So a lot, a lot of yeah. pre-tour. Those of you who are musicians, you know, pre-tour. <laughs> this is like two more shows left. I'm done for a while. Yeah. Into this album, it's been told like he took kind of like different approaches. With his music, because you know he's coming off of blood on the tracks, like you have a lot, you got to change your tack, you know. Like with that, he was doing this art thing, and he was getting more into himself as an artist. Mm -hmm. With this, I think too, like he kind of he he had the band. So so it is. It's a good uh, one two Dylan punch, right? And and a good way to start off these segments. I'm absolutely, thinking. absolutely, and absolutely. Is, and that is my one two punch.
New Country Corn Flakes, New Country Corn Flakes. Oh, they won't win when you pour on milk. Oh, they won't dance when they are crunch. They're double toasted, double crisp and good. General Mills makes them just the way they should. New Country Corn Flakes, New Country Corn Flakes. From fields of corn, so majestically way. You know, I gave you Rudy the day off. I don't, I don't know why I did that. It's gonna blow up. <laughs> it's a nuclear alarm. All right, uh, my name's Victor Krumenacher, and we're here at Wolfgang's Vault. Uh, and I'm here with my fine band consisting of Bruce Cappen on pedal steel and lap steel, Doug Hillsinger on lead guitars of various forms. John Haynes on the drums back there, and Paul Olguin on the bass. And we're going to play some uh, selections from a record called Patriarch's Blues, uh, which we did a little while back. This first song is called Patriarch's Blues. You want to give this a count, John? Lean your weight right down on me Lean your weight right down on me Papa, let that burden go Lean your weight on me Cause the evening's coming quick The evening's coming quick Darkness on the road ahead And the evening's coming quick
I'll kiss your golden ring Press it to my lips I'll kiss your golden ring And I'll see that she's fine I'll see that she's fine Go and get yourself some rest I'll see that she's fine Yeah. 